IT major Cognizant has once again beaten street expectations, again raised its full year revenue guidance to 21% now from 20.6%. So what's making that magic work and what does it look for when it comes to the following quarter and 2016? Joining me, top management, Gordon Corbin is the president at Cognizant. Gordon, always great to see you here at the NASDAQ. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be with you. So Gordon, once again, uh, the numbers have been beaten. The earnings expectations, particularly if you look at the quarterly um, expectations, 3.3% versus the street uh, hoping for 2.5% quarterly growth. Where is this growth really coming in from? But do you feel it's slightly slower than what the rest of the Indian peers this time have reported? So business is great. Yeah, quite, quite simply, we're seeing strong demand across, across the business. Now, the question is why? Clients more and more are spending on innovation, on running their businesses differently. And Cognizant over the years has invested very heavily in consulting capability, analytic capability, digital capability. So as the shift in spend is happening, we're, we are capturing a disproportionate share of the market. Um, we've raised our guidance three times now this year, um, which is you know, uh, almost unprecedented. And it's because of the demand we're seeing on the digital side and Cognizant's ability to meet what we refer to as a dual mandate, helping clients reduce the costs on their operations by running better. They free up those dollars and spend those dollars on improving their business and running different. And uh, there are only a few companies in the world that can effectively serve both sides of that dual mandate. And that's one reason why Cognizant consistently is outgrowing the industry on a year-over-year on a -year basis. But the second half of the year, you'd earlier said, is going to be slower. There are furloughs expected at the end of the year in the October-December quarter. How do you look at your earnings outlook when it comes to the last quarter? Sure. Last quarter, we're actually very pleased with. So the big thing is there are fewer billing days. There's 3.5% fewer billing days. That cost us $75 million uh, to start with. We're still having nice sequential growth, even with that $75 million um, headwind. In addition to that, uh, there are normal furloughs that happen at some of our tech clients and uh, pharmaceutical clients, a few other. But when I look at underlying demand and underlying volume, once you adjust for billing days and furloughs, Q Q4 looks quite good. Um, it, you know, as I said on our earnings call today, we have a very healthy pipeline. We continue to win good business, particularly on the digital side of, of the house because of our consulting capability, because of the capabilities that we've built up to help clients both in the idea phase in the design phase and in the build phase of digital. And there are very few companies that could do that. So I think we're very well positioned. And you see that the fact that we've, you know, we continue to increase guidance. Operationally, it's been a home run this year. Um, we've taken utiliz utilization up materially mm -hmm. now two quarters in a row. Um, that allowed us to do something very important. We want to share the success with our employees. I announced on our earnings call today that we've significantly increased our bonus accrual. We're going to pay bonuses well above last year to our employees around the world because of the strong revenue growth and because of the great work they did on operational effectiveness and increasing our utilization. A lot of people are going to be uh, very happy to hear that. We're watching and right they should, now. But and how and they should work it for Cognizant. How much will that be if there's a number? We, we certainly said uh, we're going to pay. Percentage. We, we said we're going to pay well above 100 uh, percent payout this year, and we, we should. You know, here's some point thing I say to my employees all the time: that if you're working for Cognizant, Cognizant is growing faster. We should have an obligation and the opportunity to provide better career opportunities, better better growth, and uh, sharing in the success. And that's exactly what we're doing. Have you raised the salaries on campus placements, recruitments this year as well? Because that hasn't happened in the last yeah. five years. You're, you're absolutely right. It has not happened in five, six years. Um, we, we, you know, we've always said we will match the rest of the industry. The industry moved up this year, so we moved up right, right in line with the industry. In the end, no one's going to have a competitive advantage on compensation on campus among, among the major IT players. Students are going to choose based on where the greatest career opportunities are. And Namrata, let me give you an interesting st statistic. At the schools where we have a day one slot, and students have multiple offers with other tier one companies. 75% of the time, they choose to come to Cognizant rather than one of our competitors. So what that says is money, money's you know, equal for everyone. In the end, they see greater opportunities uh, at Cognizant than the other players in the industry. And, th and that's, that's part, of, part of our culture and part of the reason why we're so successful with our customers. We have really engaged uh, employees who want to do the right thing and we're attracting great talent. But Gordon, one of the things is in this entire pyramid and this game uh, race for automation rather, the problem is that there will be some layoffs. 
or you will depend more on uh, automated technology than human workforce? At least that's been the concern of the general IT industry. How would you view that? I can't speak for others in the industry about whether they may have layoffs, but we certainly have no intention. Remember, we're growing at a healthy pace. We're hiring thousands of people, uh, every, gro gross hires every quarter. Uh, so the key is retraining the people. So uh, there are some skills mismatches. Um, so we do, you know, we are actively retraining many, many people. Now, underperformers, you, you, you know, there always going to be some underperformers that manage out, but that's, that's always been the case since we've started. We are a meritocracy. Uh, but in terms of layoffs due to demand, I don't see that at all for Congress. So attrition rates um, coming up? So attrition's been high, um, not, not just for us, but for the industry. Mm. Uh, we, we've been running about 20%. Now, remember, not everyone counts it the same. Our number includes freshers. It includes people who uh, uh, you know, leave for performance issues. Everything. So ours is all in number. Uh, but you know, um, we're running a little higher than we, we, we want. Now, you know, um, we're... We're doing a lot of work on employee engagement very successfully. Uh, as I said today, we're sharing the success with our employees. Um, so, you know, that'll come down over time. But, you know, the important thing is we continue to attract the best talent in our history. You know, and, and, you know, as long as we're doing that, we're fine.